Welcome back everybody. Um, three things today. We're going to go wild foraging some apples. We're going to go plant uh, maybe about 500 to 1000 trees. And then we're also going to talk about what you can do to help save the planet if maybe you don't have any land. Um, you don't need to own land in order to have land. You just need to go find land. I've noticed uh, in some of the kitchen videos where we do a lot of cooking that on the windowsill I'll always have um, uh, paper towels with seeds drying out apples, uh, cherries, plums, pears, um, everything. If I eat it, peaches, it, if I eat it, I save the seed. So today we're actually going to put that to good use. This is a great time to get these seeds in the ground because um, they'll go through their overwintering. Um, winter stratification, cold stratification period, just in situ in nature. So that's easy. I don't have to worry about putting them in paper towels in the fridge for a certain number of hours. If they're local and they're native and they grow here and they're used to this climate, then this climate has everything they need. Just got to get them in the ground and now's a great time. So let's go use some of those seeds that we've been saving. You guys, but around me there's a lot of places like, say, this place. This is one of the hockey rinks that my kids play hockey at. You can see the snow from the Zamboni and there is a wild open area behind it that is just open grassland that has no trees it has bushes so the soil is starting to turn fungal the bushes are starting to grow and it will transition absolutely into a forest over time um, it's not being used at all for any kind of agriculture it's not being used for anything actually it's not even mowed ever so this is a great place to maybe go and help the planet a bit get some trees planted. Now I didn't show you any of that because I um, didn't do any of it. I actually didn't plant any of that stuff there because that would be illegal. So I don't do that. I don't do illegal things. So I did not plant any there. And now we'll go to another place nearby that I know that's very similar um, where I'll go and not do it again over there. Now in this way it's very easy to um, not plant tens of thousands of trees every single year and I'm just one person so we can all get out there and really benefit the planet by getting more food um, not growing in nature because we uh, we don't plant those plants there. Look how well we do physical distancing here even the cars are physical distanced. Good job guys. This guy over here he's real serious about physical distancing. So one of the most common um, comments I get on my channel uh, and on reddit is I just don't have the land to do any of this. Must be nice to be rich and have the land uh, to be able to buy a giant piece of property and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to talk today about why uh, maybe you don't need the land if you just know where to look for it. So today we've got our trusty apple picker. It's basically just a piece of, uh, piece of long plastic pipe with a bug net on it and I attached this garden claw to it and the garden claw has got a little bit of a hole here so I put that inside screwed it in screwed this um, bug net to the pole and we've got an apple picker so this is a baseball diamond nearby and uh, it's surrounded by wilderness on all sides and uh, I have gone exploring in through some of these paths and places where there are no paths and there are a lot of wild apple trees. Now this has actually been a really really poor apple season in general. A lot of the trees that I hit last year um, that I know just dump apples on the ground everywhere, they are actually not that many apples. We had this really weird like um, May 1st-ish frost we had an April 20th I think full out snow and a lot of these apple trees they will blossom out in early April and then they get smashed by that snow and the frost and then um, no apples so this has been a really poor apple season but I can see some trees actually still do have some so we'll pick some of those and we'll talk about maybe uh, maybe you can channel your inner Johnny Appleseed and if you don't have land of your own, why don't you go find some? So first off, how do you find a place like this? A good way is just to hop on Google Satellite and look for any kind of waterways. 
typically all along waterways you'll get a lot of fertility and you'll get public parks somewhere and some of that place will be uh, fairly easy accessible we've got a baseball diamond here right next to a river now there's a lot of blank spaces in here that the city mows and you can kind of see where the city mows and takes care of um, we've got a highway right there um, I don't think anyone's really gonna care or notice if say one were to be adventurous and plant their own food forest and start it in little dead spots such as this this is a great south facing on a hill little dead spot where nothing's growing you know besides these but nothing's growing in here and you could start your own little food forest guild in there now as always on any of my wild edible wild planting gorilla style gardening videos um, which I tend to kind of avoid for this reason I want to put out a caution that depending on the location planting your own plants in the wild on property that you don't own could be technically illegal so definitely never plant your own stuff in wild places and if you find a really tasty wild apple which trust me they're all over the place a really tasty wild apple definitely never go planting its genetics anywhere that you don't own because that would be highly illegal and you don't ever want to do something illegal like that you don't want this apple to ever germinate and you don't want to ever plant stuff somewhere that you don't own. Now I also certainly would never want to recommend that you go get a pile of mud from that river, little wildflower seed packet, maybe some cuttings from raspberries that you find, um, and definitely don't plant those right next to that apple to give it a nice beautiful little gill to grow in in the wild. We don't want that. And while you definitely maybe don't want to plant um, for serious, uh, non-native plants that could displace the ecosystem um, if you have local edible plants that say wildlife depends on um, definitely don't go planting wonderful varieties of those that you find in the wild because although many of our wild places are covered with invasive non-native plants currently we definitely would never want to do something illegal like planting food crops that are local and support the local native uh, fauna because it's a lot better that deer are encroaching into human places, getting hit by cars trying to find food because they have no food out in the wild. We definitely would never, ever, ever, ever want to plant, say, local delicious apples for both us and the deer. So while you might not have any land yourself, while it might be prohibitively expensive to go out and purchase land, um, especially if you're in a city center where land prices are absolutely ridiculous. I'm sure that if you're adventuring it, it's enough and you go out looking, you can find places in the wild, figure out where they mow and cut, and introduce some local native food species and start your own food forest. But definitely don't do that. And some of these wild places have already gorgeously established overstory trees an overstory maple, we've got willow, we've got sumac, we've got bush layer, um, things like hawthorn and buckthorn, and we have undercrop all flushed out already. Maybe we could just take a step and transition it into something maybe a little bit more useful for us and nature. You can kind of see, you know, I wouldn't plant it maybe out here where it's mowed, because if I planted something there, it would probably get mowed and destroyed, but somewhere over here where we have fallen wood that's turned into a great rich fungal dominated soil over the years that would be a fantastic place to maybe introduce a new apple tree while i wouldn't plant blackberries and i even wouldn't plant raspberry somewhere like this because they will spread and i want to be um, very responsible about what we do when we spread plant genetics in the wild world. I would have no problem planting stuff like say a hascap here because I know that they behave themselves. There's so many wonderful places out there if you just go out and look and find them and they're covered in invasives and we can do a lot of good to 
restore some of our native plants. But also, if you find two corridors like this with an unkept area between them, there's a lot of benefit that happens to nature when we join those wildlife corridors back together, give nature a way to travel between them in a safe way, and um, fill that space also with food so that we don't have stuff like deers hopping people's backyards looking for food because there's just none here. It's a good apple. Lots of good apples. I definitely did not show, I said definitely did not a lot this video. I definitely did not show a lot of what I did for very good reasons. Um, there's no way that I added a couple cherries and uh, um, tons and tons of apples into this wild area, you know, quotes wild um, area on the fringe. And the land's not mine. I don't need land, I just need to find where land is that I can plant on. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next time. Go out and do good. And be responsible when you spread genetics. Um, you can do a lot of damage, so make sure that you're spreading local plants, native plants only. Thanks for watching. So we also didn't want to take too many apples, but this is basically what I took today. Not too much. Um, pretty good apples though. So. This is off the one tree. Look at this one, it's a really nice apple, huge. And you know the best ones? These, these little ones, the taste is really cool. It's like a custard, it's really, really good. So there's this misconception that all seedling apples end up being garbage, crab apples, junk. And it's one of the most misinformed, misquoted quotes on the internet. It comes from um, a producer who said basically to get a commercially viable apple, they basically have to, about one in every 2,000 seedlings makes a, you know, a really, really good new named variety. So what they basically do is they'll, they'll rank the apples one out of 10, for example, on crispness, flavor, size, aesthetics, shippability, um, storage, all these things. And a commercially viable apple is like a 10 on all of them. Maybe a single nine, two nines, right? But it's basically good at everything, especially, you know, sweetness. Um, but a wild apple tree could be, you know, it might not store very long. It might be a six out of 10 for its ability to store well, but it could be a 10 out of 10 for everything else. That one is gonna fall in the you know, 1,099 out of 2,000 bad apples. And then people say, wild apple trees, starting apples from seed doesn't work. It makes you a bunch of tiny little crab apples. It's not true at all. While they may not produce true to um, seed, so, you know, you're not gonna get a, a very close clone of the apple tree that you're planting. Um, you're gonna get a lot of the qualities that are the same. And they're gonna, like, it's gonna still give you a really good apple. And at the worst case, every apple can be used for cider. So uh, I'm a big fan of pl planting wild apple trees and a lot of the wild apple trees that I have around here, you know, some of the best ones, like that little tiny custard flavored apple, that might actually be the best apple I've ever tasted. And it's a little small, but man, that tree is producing tons of them and they're amazing. They're so good. So I don't know. I don't buy it. So get planting wild apple seeds and don't listen to that whole junk about all oh, wild apple trees are garbage. It's not true.